Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to see what are the different Oracle database architectures available on Amazon RDS. What are the benefits of having say multi-tenant architecture versus non-CDB? How we can migrate from one architecture to another? We are going to see and much more in this particular tutorial. So please stay tuned, watch till the end and let me know how you find this content. And all this we are going to learn by doing. So let's build. Okay. So let's get started. First. Login into management console, go to RDS. You either can search RDS there or if it is already there in favorites, you can click on it. Okay, so I have one database created which is Oracle Standard Edition 2. And whatever we are going to discuss that applies to Enterprise Edition as well. So go into the database. I want to show you the configuration first, right? So this we already seen in the past. If you haven't seen it, you can see my earlier videos, but this is uh, basic Oracle database which is created as a standalone single instance database right so this is not multi-tenant architecture and in this tutorial we want to see what are different architectures available so one of the first architecture is standalone non CDB database and one important thing is architecture setting you can see non multi-tenant architecture so that is the first architecture available in Oracle RDS okay so this is good i will not spend much time on this i just want to bring your attention to this uh, read you can upgrade to oracle database 12, 21c and higher only if your db engine uses the multi-tenant architecture right so for 21c multi-tenant architecture is mandatory right only up to 19c oracle is supporting non-cdb databases that's the reason even RDS supports non-CDB database up to 19C. But if you are moving into 21C and when 19C becomes non-supported, then 21C you have to go with CDB architecture, container database. Okay, so to convert it, you can modify and go to Oracle multi architecture. So we'll just directly go there. This is the first architecture we saw, which is non-CDB. So if I go and say okay i want to modify it then it's the architectural setting we saw it was like uh, non-cdb now we'll make it cdb so just read a bit a container database cdb includes one or more tenant databases pdbs so if you see the naming con like uh, uh, the naming convention which uh, aws uses is it says tenant databases instead of uh, saying pluggable databases that we used to use in uh, oracle on premises but here in RDS, it's saying tenant databases. It's nothing but PDBs for us, okay? So non-CDB doesn't use the multi-tenant architecture. You can convert a non-CDB to CDB, but you can't convert a CDB to a non-CDB. So if you are going ahead with making this Oracle multi-tenant architecture a change, this is non-reversible, that is the message. And when you are converting to multi-tenant architecture, you won't able to upgrade the database in the single operation. Right. If you see, this is grayed out. So I cannot change the DB version when I am making this change. In the single operation, you cannot upgrade it. So this is another thing you should take a note of. Okay. So everything else, I'll just keep it as is. There is no other change I want as part of this particular operation. And I'll say I want to apply it immediately. And a couple of things you can uh, note here. Right. One is database parameter group. This is Oracle SE219, now it is Oracle SE2 CDB19. Same for option group, Oracle SE219, Oracle SE2 CDB19. So these are the value changed. So basically, if you see it here, Oracle Standard Edition 2 engine, I just want to see whether there is any change in the engine type. What I uh, would think is engine will change. You please take a note of it, right? whatever you are seeing it here right oracle standard edition 2 we'll just come back when the change is effective and see like uh, what we see it in engine type okay so database is upgrading so it is making a change so maybe this is going to take time so what i'll do is i'll just pause this video and come back when this instance as a cdb is ready for us and we'll then talk about the different two architectures in cdb as well okay so stay tuned i'll come back Okay, so instance is in available status now and it really took time. I finished my dinner, I watched some video and then 
it is done so it is like almost more than an hour uh, and maybe it is due to like size of the instance is t3 medium there's a minimum size what is available for rds database uh, oracle so i just choose that so that might be the one of the reason but it really took time okay and uh, i observed few statuses like which is like it was initially upgrading then it changed to modifying then rebooting and then it's available right and we'll just review this now now we know that this is cdb database and one thing we can verify from is oracle standard edition to cdb right this is one change which is like very clear to us right endpoint i don't see the endpoint changed right and then configuration if i go into configuration the architecture configuration if you see this is single tenant configuration okay so this is a change right and as it is a single tenant what does that mean is it is a cdb database only one uh, pdb right single pdb if you can call right uh, so there is no multi tenant architecture still like multi tenant in the sense Right, you cannot add more tenant or cannot add more PDBs to this. Right? And SID is RDS CDB and this is not changeable. Right, this is going to be RDS CDB. Okay, these are the few things uh, I noticed. And uh, we already have seen that option group is like uh, having a name uh, containing CDB. Same is for parameter group. So these are two other changes which happened when we change it to cdb architecture okay so one change is engine is like oracle standard edition 2 cdb uh, accordingly you have changes done to parameter group and option group so default parameter group and option group for this particular engine is going to be different that's it otherwise like for single tenant architecture i don't see endpoint is uh, changing in any way now let's modify the single tenant database to multi-tenant so i'll just click on modify yeah so here if you see there is an option now architectural configuration single tenant is the current architecture we can choose multi-tenant configuration so if you notice to convert your non-cdb database to multi-tenant architecture you have to go through uh, single tenant configuration first like so uh, i can see it is from non-cdb to cdb with single tenant and from single tenant to multi tenant and you can't convert a multi tenant configuration to a single tenant configuration when you modify your database architecture the change apply immediately and you cannot go back so it is again non reversible change but i do see that there is an option to choose database version so like we can upgrade like when we are doing this that's what i assume i'm not going to upgrade it as part of this change i just want to show you the multi-tenant configuration okay so let's proceed and apply immediately now we don't see an option to even apply during the next maintenance window so when you are making change from single tenant to multi-tenant that has to be applied right away so like uh, make a note of it Okay, so let me click on modify db instance so we'll come back when uh, like with this change happen but you can see that right away it started creating my dbs tenant database so now my database is the instance and there is a my db which is tenant database so i don't know how much time this will take but while this happening i want to bring your attention to one of the blog and it's really beautiful written blog I will share this link in the description so that you can spend some time and go through it what it mean to be multi-tenant feature for Amazon RDS for Oracle okay so couple of things I'll not go into all these details but one thing I want to bring to, to your notice is you can have up to three user created pluggable database per container database without requiring additional multi-tenant license so this is something to do with uh, how many like pdb database you can use and somewhere in the blog below right i have seen that three user created pluggable database is applicable with standard edition but for enterprise edition it is more than three it's uh, almost uh, 30 tenant database we can create so if you see pdb is nothing but tenant database in amazon rds for oracle okay so i'll not go line by line but just browse through it see what multi-tenant configuration means to us 
the new multi-tenant configuration of Oracle multi-tenant architecture in Amazon RDS for Oracle is an alternative to the existing single tenant configuration. As the name suggests, the RDS for Oracle single tenant configuration has a single PDB per CDB. That's what we have seen in earlier when we upgraded it. And here is what I was referring to. If you Amazon RDS for Oracle offers the technical capability to house more than three PDBs in Enterprise Edition. And what are the uh, key benefits of using multi-tenant? Right. So one is increased resource utilization. You are having multiple different databases in single instance. So that is how like you can use your resources uh, optimally. Then you can reduce your compute cost. Again, the same same concept. Like if you remember, like in the past, right, we used to reduce cost by combining multiple uh, schemas in the single database. So that was schema consolidation. So with this multi-tenant architecture, we get consolidation at a different level because we are creating PDBs. So that is a separation better than just putting it in different schema in the single database. Right so here, what we are talking about is different database for per application in that sense. Okay, so it simplifies database operation and maintenance. And what does that mean is like operation and maintenance. When you are taking backup, you are taking backup on instance level, CDB level. Right, it's just one example of maintenance, which is taking backup. Again, your parameter group and option group will be one for CDB, right? So you don't need to manage it per uh, PDBs in that sense. Okay, so you can convert single tenant configuration to multi tenant. We have seen uh, how to do that. And uh, automation backup, we already talked about like this is uh, uh, RDS automation available for manage backup and restore of CDBs. Right, so it's not like PDB level. Okay, apply single parameter group or option group to PDBs within an RDS for Oracle instance. So it's like uh, this is the biggest advantage, right? Manage each PDB as a separate logical database with different primary users, passwords, user schemas, and table spaces. Okay, so this is these are the uh, few important benefits of going with multi-tenant uh, architecture. Okay, so I do see that PDB is available. So let's go into my DB and look at tenant database. So this is a tenant database ARN. So we do know that instance database is my database and tenant database is my DB. And you can see that character set is mentioned for this. So I assume like you can have different character set for each PDB. I like I'm just assuming it, but we'll uh, we'll check that out, right? But looks like the case. Okay, so this and deletion protection we can control on PDB level. Seems like okay. Let me see if I can add one more PDB. So add tenant database is uh, not available at this stage. But still, let me try it from here. Okay, add tenant is not available. Uh, maybe because it's backing up. So we need to wait for a few minutes and come back and see how things look when you are adding new tenant database. So stay tuned. I'll just pause this video and come back when we are ready to move to the next step. Okay, so this operation was fairly quick. I can see in a minute or so like database is available. Okay, so we do see that one PDB is added, which is a tenant database in case of RDS. So now let me see what are the actions available. So we can convert it to multi AZ deployment, stop temporarily, add tenant. Okay, so everything else is uh, normal which we have seen before, like converting to multi AZ and all that. But let me add one tenant database. Okay, so I'll say like, okay, my PDP2. Okay, and user, I'll just keep my PDB user auto generate password. Okay, so we cannot have dash. Let's see underscore. Okay, it does take it. So I'll just use auto generate password. And here I do see that we can change character set. So that's what I was expecting, but that's good. So apart from this, I don't see any other option. So let me add tenant. Okay, so tenant is, uh, tenant is being added now. So let me go to, so here we saw that there are a couple of actions including add tenant, but what about tenant itself? If I go here and what are the options available? Only option is delete. So I don't see any other option because backups as well we cannot take on, on PDB level. So it has to be CDB level. 
okay so now let's wait for this tenant to be available so our new pdb or tenant database is ready you can see my pdb2 is available let me go there and review configuration so you can see character set is same like we haven't changed it but like you can change character set which is different from cdb okay so that's it like uh, i think uh, all is good we are able to convert our single tenant database to multi tenant we are able to add multiple pdbs and all is looking good one more thing yeah so for connectivity you can see like endpoint is still same your port is still same and when you are connecting as a sid right you will use my pdb or my pdb2 whatever pdbs you want to connect and you cannot connect to root cdb so connect uh, connect to a tenant database you can't connect to the root container of the cdb database because amazon rds for oracle multi tenant does not allow the creation of a common users you can connect to individual pdbs within your cdb using either the corresponding primary user or other local user created on that tenant database so for example my pdb is is the name of your pdb then connectivity endpoint is still remain the same where which you get at cdb level port is already seen there and then for sid you will use my pdb instead of uh, your cdb database name okay so that's it i think like it's a uh, pretty clear using this user you can connect or otherwise after connect like uh, after connecting with this user you can create more local users and using that you can connect to the pdb so these are few architectural issue you should be aware about uh, when you are working on oracle database on rds one is non cdb database one single tenant cdb database and multi tenant cdb database